when I'm um, when I was thinking about uh, coming here, I was uh, thinking of uh, what what are the, what are the most topics that I could choose one of them to uh, and I could deliver to you uh, that could be of importance to you and you now and and for the future. So I was thinking, you know, uh, the theme of this conference is about uh, pursuit of happiness and. There is, you know, like two challenges that faces every individual and organizations and maybe nations today. And um, one, of, one of those challenges, actually, you know, uh, I'm going to, and instead of uh, verbalize it, I'm going to, to give you an example of it. But first of all, I always believe that um, human beings are somehow landed here on planet Earth, okay, in spaceships called mothers. Uh, and they have purpose and they have the ability to achieve and to, to have everything uh, that they want. But somehow, somehow, they get lost in that journey we call life. And the first challenge that I want you to take, you know, to get, to get over it today is, um, is all about the choice you make when you're very little. And uh, my example is actually uh, a story uh, about a friend, of, a friend of mine. When we were little, uh, I was uh, forbidden to read any books, you know, except school books during school time. So I only had a few minutes uh, when I'm going to the mosque and when I'm going back from the mosque to read some books, you know, quickly. Not, not the book, you know, not to finish the book, but actually to, to read a little bit of it. And then I, I would go home and feeling very disappointed that I'm not able to continue reading the book. So I convinced my parents somehow they weren't actually they weren't great and everything, and uh, they want me to they wanted to motivate me to, to focus on my study. So I uh, <laughs> I liked that idea and I told them, okay, do you know what? I have some idea that would motivate me to uh, to focus on my study even more. And they said, okay, and what is it? And I told them, you know, I need to go to study with a friend of mine. And uh, they agreed. So every, you know, other day, I would uh, go to a friend of mine and we would uh, sit down as we, and, and we pretend that we are studying, but actually we are reading books. And then all of a sudden, he was, he was, he was listen, listening to his music and I was reading books. And then, you know, reading is contagious. And then he... Um, he grabbed the book and he started to read and then after a few weeks he started uh, to be like uh, exactly like me abandoned his music and then he started to focus on reading so I was like amazed and he asked me a question you know what uh, what the next book that you would recommend me to read and I was like you can choose whatever you want uh, it's up to you what do you want to read about and he then he said something really important you know he said Actually, I don't know what's next. I'm imitating you. I'm not being me reading here. I'm actually imitating you. You do something, and that, that thing that you're doing somehow uh, makes you look smart to me, and I want to be smart like you, so I'm reading. So I told him, you know, but, but you can choose whatever topics you want to read about. And he said, you know, that's my, my, my issue. I always imitate people. I always imitate other people. You know, when I go to a shop to buy clothes, I have like on my mental screen, some people are uh, choosing for me the, the clothes I want to I wanna wear. Like, I like, uh, I like this, uh, this shoes, but then someone in my mental screen is making fun of that shoes. So all of a sudden, I think of another choice. So that, that happens all the time. That is the biggest challenge, challenge that we have that we are not being, we, we are not ourselves most of the time. But my friend actually, he experienced one moment of awareness, a very rare moment that we uh, don't experience every day. It's a moment when you're aware of your choices, of your decisions, of your beliefs, of your attitudes, of your emotional pattern. Okay, and then you decide whether you want to keep them or you, uh, you want to just, um, you know, let them go. So, when he said that to me, I was, 
I was like, you know, thinking of a solution for him, but I, it's, it's, not, it's not something like I can do for him. It's something that he needs to do for himself. Um, and this is actually, you know, this is, this is, um, this is something really, uh, you know, it could upset you, it could upset me, but this is, this is a fact. Most people are not the product of themselves. They are the product of their environment, of the, of the peer group around them. Okay, do, do you want to choose something and then their peer group push them in a different direction and then simply they accept and I don't know why people accept, you know, how does it happen? How does it happen that people accept to go to, to a, di a, a direction that they don't want to uh, have in their life? Do you want to go to uh, a destination, but they decide to go to that destination because they want to honor their fathers, they want to honor their friends, okay? They want to be accepted by people. So the first challenge that I have here for you is you need to be unaccepted. You need to be unaccepted. Accept by yourself. Accept by yourself. Okay? So if you want to do something, you know, if I'm stepping on your feet right now, would you just uh, pretend that it's not, nothing happening? Okay? You would just smile and, and, and be, uh, be happy about it because you don't want to disappoint me or anything. So you want to keep me stepping on your feet? But if I'm stepping in your feet and it's hurting, wouldn't you push me away so you can you know, stop the hurt? Right? So this is actually, you know, doesn't happen in real life. In real life, you know, people just inject you with, your, with their ideas, with their beliefs, okay? Do you, want me, do you want you to act in a certain way? For example, if, you, if you're watching a match, and uh, your reaction when you like um, uh, a goal that, uh, that, uh, that was scored, and then you, uh, your reaction is just very calm and quiet, and you just smile and you cross your arm like this, and you continue watching the game. But your friend wants you to jump like, yeah, you have to, you have to express yourself out loud. What would you be choosing then? Would you choose to be out loud, or would you choose to be yourself? Well, most people don't. Most people just, you know, that you want to be like, okay, I want to be out loud, but they're but they not aware, actually. They're not aware of that mechanism, okay? So, um, the second challenge, and I only have two challenges for you. One, one for yourself, and one for maybe your nation, or the organization you're working for, or the organization you created. Um, it's about perspective. It's about perspective. And actually, in, um, in 2012, um, I was in Basel, Switzerland. And um, uh, I was invited to, uh, to stream a uh, TED, TED event. I mean, TED, TED Global. So we can watch it online while it's happening. And um, I was uh, offered to invite uh, up to 10 people to attend with me. And I invited some, some of the most brightest minds of in, in, from all around Switzerland to watch, to watch the, the event with me. And then while we were watching, you know, some speakers, they were really extraordinary, like Brian Greene, you know, with extraordinary uh, visualizations and, you know, and uh, talking about very fancy theories about is it, uh, uni or is it only one universe or is it multiverse, okay? And then someone uh, um, came on the stage and spoke about the scarcities in, uh, on planet Earth. I mean, uh, the world is coming to end, and he was like a representative of, of all the pessimism in the world. I mean, he started to talk about the world is coming to an end soon, because, you know, lack of water, lack of energy, lack of intelligence, you know, lack of all kinds of resources you can imagine. So, you know, I felt like, okay, <laughs> it's, it's, it became like very dark. And actually, he had the stage manager and uh, I, I think, you know, all the, the people who are create in, in the creative control to switch off the light, okay, so, can, so, so people can really experience how dark ages humanities are, are headed to. And, uh, you know, my friends started 
really to interact now with uh, with uh, with Ted because Ted was something very very new to them. Um, I felt like okay, but uh, but Ted is not about that. Ted is about ideas worth spreading, and it shouldn't be uh, that idea in particular shouldn't be spread. So. After a while, after that gentleman finished, his name is Paul, uh, G uh, Paul uh, Gelding, and um, uh, Chris Anderson invited the next speaker, and it was Peter Diamandis. Uh, anybody is familiar with the speaker? He's, uh, he's like, all the time he's speaking about abundance, and we are abundant, you know, in everything. You know, we could uh, use our resources smartly and... Uh, we could uh, make a difference very easy, you know. Life is so great, life is amazing. But the thing is, what really astonished me, you know, is that now you have two different speakers talking about two different, you know, uh, t topics. One is very pessimistic, you know, about life, about the future. And one is very uh, optimistic and uh, he's, he's full of ideas. But what really amazed me is that uh, Chris Anderson invited the two speakers after they finished their talks, and then he, asked, uh, he had them to argue with each other about their notions, about their different, you know, so different notion, notions from each other. And then he asked the audience, very smart audience like you, and then he asked them, you know, why, uh, are you with... Uh, Paul uh, uh, Gelding or with uh, Peter Diamandis? Are, are you with the abundant life, okay, or you're with uh, life with all the scarcities in it? And guess what? You know, I thought that the audience will be like, um, uh, like, what do you think? What, how, 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 what do you think, you know, the audience, uh, you know, with what? Abundance, okay? Actually, it was like uh, less than 50% than of the audience were with uh, Peter Diamandis' theories about the abundant world. And the rest, of course, uh, were with, uh, with uh, the gentleman uh, about... <laughs> so, back to my friend, okay, that I told you about that he, um, he felt in that uh, special moment of awareness that he's not himself, he's not being himself and the world and the environment, you know, trying to push him. Um, I had a phone call from him, you know, uh, two years ago, three years ago, I had a phone, phone, phone call from him. And uh, actually, I used to do everything I like to do in life. You know, I wanted to be, uh, when I was young, I, uh, I would uh, enjoy painting. I would enjoy writing. I would enjoy, you know, coaching and helping people. And I became all that, okay? I like traveling. I travel, you know. I didn't, I didn't consider uh, anybody's desire except me. And that actually you know, caused me you know, like, um, some problems you know, in my, my teenager years. But the truth of, ma of the matter is that you know, later on in life, okay, people started, including my friend, to appreciate what I do. You know, to appreciate that uh, being yourself uh, is actually, uh, not being yourself actually, caused them to be unfulfilled, okay? To, that got them to be lost in, uh, in that, we, that you know, journey we call life. So when I had that phone call with him, he was like encouraging me, you know, do your best to continue on the, on the path you created for yourself, okay? Because I'm not happy, you know? He, he gave up, he gave up, you know, his dreams, ambitions, you know, everything we talked about when we were little, Okay, for something that he didn't want. And he's not, he's not remembering when exactly did he give up you know, his ambitions and his dreams. So one, one big challenge that we have here is your choice. It's a, it's a matter of choice. Some, some gentleman here uh, you know, talked about you know, it's, it's a matter of decision to be happy. Okay? And it's actually very, very correct. And it's a matter of choice. You know, people can make their own choices. You know, it's up to them. Okay, but when it comes to working with people, that's the maturity part of it. Okay, when you're not able, except seeing one face of the cube, you're not mature enough. You're not qualified enough to work with people. Okay, so this is uh, this is a story of a friend, and this is a life story from Ted. Uh, 
uh, and TED audience, which uh, I was uh, hoping, you know, that they would um, uh, raise their hands, you know, for the two gentlemen, the gentleman who talked about scarcity and the gentleman who talked about, about abundance. So my, my friend's life, you know, could be edited, even though he's like very, um, very desperate, like you continue your journey, I'm here disappointed, and I'm not able to do anything about it, okay? I think his story is able to be edited, you know, he's able to edit his story, and I think, you know, no matter age you are, Okay, no matter the situations, you know, you're facing now in life, no matter how the pressures you're under, okay, I think your life story could be edited and you could, and that's for sure, be happy, but under one condition is to be yourself and to be able to see the world from different perspectives as people around you. Thank you so much. <laughs>